today, I want to talk about how and why the over leveraged shorts are in desperate need for your shares. I also want to go through and discuss AMC's new recent dilution. So stay tuned and let's make some money. Today is also one of the last days for the Easter sale at the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group. Be sure to use code EASTER at the checkout for $100 off the price of the lifetime membership or 25% off your first month of the monthly membership using the link in the description below. But now I'll dive straight in with the key information. So, Tony Denaro tweeted saying, why are all of the people that hate AMC all of a sudden banding together to support Vlad Tenev and Robin Hood? This is something I touched on in my video yesterday. All of a sudden, these shields came out of the woodwork to support Vlad Tenev and Robin Hood. They were saying how good the product is, how many great products are coming in the future, and how Vlad all along has been the good guy. Which to me proves more and more these people, these characters were shills and infiltrators paid to be here to spread FUD and effectively paid to support Robin Hood. And the reason why these shills are still being paid to infiltrate the AMC community is because AMC short interest just hit a new record high yesterday and likely again today. Over the last few months, this figure has increased from less than 20 million legally disclosed shorted shares to now 40 million. Pre-split, this is fairly similar to 400 million shares being shorted. But obviously, not quite exactly because you've got a factor in the ape short interest and the additional dilution we've had since then, but short interest has increased massively. No matter which way you argue it, over the last six months, shorted shares have increased by 21 million shares. The short interest, legally disclosed at least, has doubled, more than doubled. And that's because the only way these shorts can continue pushing the price down is by forcibly pushing the price down with more shorted shares, whether it be legally shorted shares or illegal synthetics. But all this does is wind the coil tighter and tighter and tighter and average down their short position, meaning that when AMC increases in price, these shorts will be liquidated much, much earlier. We don't have to reach $100 or $200 for the short squeeze to begin. At this rate, the short squeeze would start at, say, $20 per share, because the shorts by then would be significantly underwater now with an average short position of just $6 per share. And obviously when that short squeeze begins at say $20 per share, shorts will be liquidated and the price would very, very quickly rocket up significantly past that level. Part of the reason for that is because of just how heavily over leveraged these shorts actually are, as perfectly explained by David Orr. He tweeted obviously saying 6.5 times leverage scares me. This screenshot says today, public disclosures allow us to track the nominal leverage of the large multi-strategy hedge funds. Here are three of the most watched. You can see here Millennium Capital Management has a nominal leverage ratio of 6.8 times to 1, Citadel with 6.6 .6 times to 1, and 0.72 Asset Management with 5.1 times to 1. So again, because of how heavily over leveraged these hedge funds are, it wouldn't take much for the increase in price on AMC to dramatically impact these hedge funds, causing liquidations. What this kind of nominal leverage ratio means is they're using $10,000 of their own money to short $66,000 worth of shares, or using a billion dollars of their own money to short $6.6 .6 billion worth. Also, if you didn't know, there's a 100% guaranteed refund policy at the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group. If the educational videos and trade ideas don't help you to make a single profitable trade in 30 days, there's a 100% guaranteed refund, no questions asked. And if you are debating about joining, be sure to read the testimonials over on the website. And also remember to use code EASTER at checkout for $100 off the price of the lifetime membership or 25% off your first month of the monthly membership using the link in the description below. Now I want to explain why these shorts or a potential reason as to why these shorts are trying to push the price down to obtain your shares. So Robert tweeted these screenshots for both AMC and CNK or Cinemark Holdings showing their share ownership. So he said before, per Weeble, AMC had 88% retail ownership. Adam Aaron confirmed that at one point, maybe still, AMC had or has 94% retail ownership. 
for now per Weeble, it's magically showing 36% is held by institutions and that only 63% is held by retail investors and insiders. Now, to compare and contrast, Cinemark has 113% institutional ownership and 11% insider ownership, totaling to about 124% owned. So A, how does that make any sense that over 100% of the Cinemark flow is held? Maybe due to the short interest and the shorter shares, but I didn't know or didn't think that Cinemark had 24% short interest. Regardless, what this also shows is that institutions have been building a larger and larger portion or position in AMC. They've been buying every share they can get their hands on. They've been buying from the dilution and they've been trying to buy as many retail investor pay per handed shares as they possibly can. Maybe the retail ownership has gone down from 94% to 88%, now just to 63%. I don't know if that's true, but I imagine with the dilution, these hedge funds and these institutions could come in and scoop up some shares on the cheap. And obviously with the paper hands that we've seen over the last few years with the stock price being pushed down, obviously the vast majority of retail investors are still holding, but some few shareholders have sold. But so what this is telling me is that institutions are actually trying to build a big AMC position. I wonder why. My mind keeps coming back to this scene from the big short where these hedge funds, these banks, these institutions, none of them would mark Michael Burry's swaps accurately. But when they'd secured themselves a net short position, aka they had more shorted shares or shorted positions than they had long positions, all of a sudden they were free to mark accurately. Maybe the same thing is happening with AMC. These institutions are trying to obtain at least 51% of the shares so then they can mark the price properly, cause the squeeze, so that of course they benefit. Maybe some of these institutions are trying to secure a net long position as to mark the price properly, cause the squeeze, but get out with a benefit or get out with a gain. Now that's just one possible theory, but I'd love to know your thoughts on why these institutions are trying to buy more AMC shares. On top of this, you may have also seen that UBS has just sold $8 billion worth of Credit Suisse's assets to Apollo Global Management. Now I say assets like that because maybe UBS aren't selling Credit Suisse's assets to Apollo, but maybe their liabilities, those total return swaps. It says Apollo is going to purchase $8 billion of senior secured financing facilities, whatever that means. Regardless of what Apollo is specifically purchasing that relates to Credit Suisse, all this tells me is the Credit Suisse acquisition from or by UBS was and is an absolute nightmare. UBS clearly uncovered tons and tons of stuff that they did not want, that they do not like, and they're scrambling to get rid of it. Now today you may have seen that AMC also filed to issue or filed to sell from time to time $250 million worth of shares. I believe these shares are being sold at $4 to $5 per share, so it's around 50 to 60 million shares. Now I've got my thoughts on dilution, but let's also go through this tweet from Bigums. He said, like I said, it's one last capital raise. The rest of this year looks incredible and 2025 looks even better. He said, you've got to make sure you've got strong reserves as you move towards profitability. And this will also be used to restructure the debt with this capital raise. And he says, good job, Adam Aaron. He says in the short term it sucks, but you can't burn a quarter of your reserves. And that's what we're on track to do in quarter one. Now Robert has pointed out the reason why this dilution is happening is because AMC needs to hold over a billion dollars in cash as per their covenants. I'd previously thought AMC had a billion dollars, there's no need for a capital raise because they can just use that billion dollars as working capital. It doesn't matter if we drop to 750 million or 500 million or 250 million because we've still got spare cash. But that's actually not the case per the covenants. Right now, AMC has 1.1 billion, but obviously if that number dips below a billion, the loans are due instantaneously. I guess AMC is forecasting to dip below a billion dollars due to the slightly worse quarter one box office than expected and therefore needed to raise cash to avoid an instantaneous loan recall and bankruptcy. 
So my thoughts around dilution, as I've always explained, is that I don't like dilution. But in this instance, it sounds like a necessary evil. While I don't like dilution, I dislike the sound of AMC going bankrupt even more. Similarly with the reverse split. I didn't want AMC to be delisted to the OTC market, and the only way to avoid that was with the reverse split. So while dilutions and reverse splits don't necessarily help or didn't necessarily help, actually they did help because they helped us avoid bankruptcy and they helped us avoid being delisted to the OTC markets. In my eyes, if AMC goes bankrupt, the shorts win and the squeeze is guaranteed to be over. If we get delisted to the unregulated OTC markets, the shorts win and the squeeze is guaranteed to be over. But if we stay afloat, we stay unbankrupt, we stay listed, the squeeze is still on. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.